I'm a small businessman uh, in Santa Andreas. I started a business there in, 19, in the 1980s, and we built it to four yards. We have a yard in Merced, one in uh, Jamestown, one in San Andreas, and one here in Placerville. They don't move away. And the biggest conflict that I had all the time in building a business was not competing with other people in the industry. It was competing with my own government and what government did to me. That's what got me involved in politics to begin with. And that's what's bringing me back. Um, a bill passed this last year that is just a piece of horrible um, social engineering, AB 32. It actually passed a few years ago, but it's being implemented now. AB 32 uh, is a global warming initiative that will require a business owner such as myself to replace every single diesel truck that I own. I've got 20 trucks. At 250000 a pot, that's $5 million. Now, I can assure you that my competitors who are national love it because they have two or 3,000 trucks. They're huge companies. What they do is they just bring their new trucks to California. They ship their older trucks out of state. Their trucks live out their useful life just as they would have otherwise. But I am punished because I'm a California-only business. Have you ever heard of anything so stupid for a state to do yeah, to its business people? It's absurdly stupid. And you know, you'll, you'll ask the question, why do they do these things? Why do they do these, make these foolish decisions? And uh, the conclusion I've come to is it's not that they're dumb. I think a lot of them are, but um, I think that's irrespective of party. But it's mostly because they just don't care. And my belief is this, that, you know, I'm a, in my personal faith, I'm a Christian. I believe in, I believe in Jesus, and I believe that he lived a sinless life and died for, for my sins. That's what I believe. And I believe that uh, I'm not a very good Christian, but I do, I believe that. And I would uh, fight to the death to defend it. But I take that on faith. You know, I haven't seen the proof. I've read the scripture. Anyway, the point is that we take these things on faith. It's a matter of a belief system that we, that we adhere to as a matter of choice. Liberals have their own religion. And it's a religion of the state. It's a belief in socialism that even though all the evidence of human history proves that it doesn't work, it will this time. And it trumps everything else. If you'd ever been to a Christmas dinner at my house with my seven brothers and sisters, four right-wing conservative Republicans and four left-wing common <laughs> de Democrats <laughs> at the same table, you learn you weren't going to persuade them about politics and you weren't going to persuade them about religion. We talked about the kids. <laughs> Talk about the meal. Talk about other things, the ball game on TV. You are not going to persuade liberals to give that up. And I... I I know this sounds like a downer to some folks, and I don't want it to, but we're only going to change this by winning. These are two completely opposing views of the world, and they are incompatible. We are a house divided. One is going to live, and one is going to die. One is going to succeed, and one is going to fail. And we're at a point now where we're pretty evenly divided in this nation. California is way off to the left. I feel like a paratrooper that's been dumped behind enemy lines. <laughs> But that is, that's what we're up against. The Tea Party has been instrumental in uh, waking so many people up and bringing people back into the arena that have been otherwise disengaged. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep writing those letters to the editor. Keep making phone calls. You know, in my particular case, I've had, I don't know, how, how many Tea Party members you suppose have been to our campaign headquarters? 50? making phone calls. Uh, we have phone bank every Saturday morning. And by the way, let me give you a little plug. This coming Memorial Day, we're going to have a barbecue at my uh, my shop in San Andreas, the, at the, the headquarters. And we're going to have a, a old country band, a rock and roll band called the Rusty Rockers from San Andreas are going to play. We're going to have a big barbecue and we welcome all of you to come out and join us. It should be a whole lot of fun. Uh, I won't take any more time in this rambling speech. I'll just answer questions any of you got. Oh, there's flyers for the event back there, too. So, which, where kind of generally is AD5 at this point? Well, I just you know what, I have to tell you, I'm a little confused myself when it comes to Shingle Springs. But it basically, it's everything above Cameron Park. Everything to the east of Cameron Park is in the district. And in Placer County, it's Auburn and Newcastle only. And then it's all of the following seven counties, Amador, Calaveras, Alpine, Mona, Tuolumne, Mariposa, Madera. 
I represented about 65% of this <coughs> district uh, previously when I was in office. Um, I left the Senate in 2004, so it's been eight years ago now that I left. And I've been back running my business since then. Yes, Ray? I know the answer, but some folks may not know. What is your position on high, this crazy high-speed rail stuff going on? Well, I've been against high-speed rail from the beginning. I, um, it's, it's a very contentious issue in this campaign. Uh, my opponent is saying that he is uh, leading the charge against high-speed rail, which seems to me to be somewhat hard to swallow in light of the fact that he voted for it four times and was a leading proponent of it. And now that it's uh, it's very inconvenient to be a supporter of high-speed rail in this district when it failed here by, I don't know, 65, 35, something like that, a huge margin. And uh, I think it's either uh, gullibility or duplicity. I don't know which. But um, I'm opposed to it. It's social engineering. He's trying to tell us how we're going to live our lives. Rather than doing the smart thing, which is producing domestic oil and respecting it, not treating it as if it were something like a man was a you know, a, a wart on the Earth's body. You know, they, uh, the left believes that man's like a cancer on the Earth. And I, th I think this is a completely wrong-headed view. And they also possess this uh, philosophy of scarcity, you know, the doctrine of scarcity. Everything is running out. Everything is running out. Well, we're not running out. There, we will find new ways to do things we've never even thought of. And that's the, that's the wonder of America, that people can do that. But if government constrains you and makes you go through all these regulations and all these hoops every single time you try to do anything, it stifles that creativity and it prevents people from being able to do that. When I went into business, in the insulation business, I was a very young man. I went and saw my Uncle Elmo, who lives in New Mexico. And I was contemplating what to do. I was just getting out of college and I wanted to do something in business. I didn't want to go into academia like all my brothers and sisters did, my father. And he said, well, um, the one word of advice I'd give to you is, don't go into any kind of a trade that someone would do for a reason other than money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go into a trade that someone would do for the fun of it, or that someone would do because it's part of their tradition or their heritage. Um, so I said, well, the nastiest thing I could think of is probably being a garbage collector or an insulator. But I've done both of those things. <coughs> and um, insulation was slightly more attractive to me. <laughs> and so that's ultimately what I ended up doing. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Did your Judge. four Democratic uh, relatives at Christmas give up their ham and turkey to the four gluttonous Republicans? <laughs> well, I, was bigger, I was bigger than any other. So I just gave up whatever I wanted. Uh, they, they, we, we actually get along quite well. And remarkably, one of my older brothers, who was just so far to the left, he's a, he was the head of the Mailman Center for Child Development in Miami, and an academic, uh, become a big shot, Kimbrough. And he, he has come our way now. I mean, he's, uh, he's 64. I think he's uh, closer to the time that he's going to meet his maker. He's had a lot of uh, struggles in life. And I think he's become more, uh, less prideful. I, I mean, he's, got, he's gotten to be a lot nicer to be around, I can tell you that. Hopefully the two twins belong to the Republicans. Yeah, but that's the oh, my golly, they do. My daughter, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> She's a, she is definitely a conservative, and so is her husband, Brian. It's oh, so who, what's the name of the person you're trying to see? I'm not, it's an open seat. There is no one in it. It's an open seat. There were four different people represented a piece of this district, a piece of the new district. Uh, Beth Gaines had a part of it, Allison Huber had a part of it, Kristen Olson had a part of it, and Barry Hill had a part of it in the South. So it's a newly created seat. And I, uh, I represented the fourth assembly district back in the day, and that was uh, Placer, El Dorado, Ambler, Calaveras, Mono. And uh, then in the Senate, I represented from Modoc County to Mono County. Uh, biggest district. Matter of fact, I believe it is the largest geographic district in the nation. Wow. Senate district in the nation. Um, very, very tough to reach all those people. Yes, ma'am. Was this newly created district gerrymandered? Uh, the first part, and yeah. the second part is what it is. It's basically rural, so it predominantly mostly, mostly conservative. Would it's, a you very, say? it's a 43 32 registration Republican over Democrat. Pretty high decline to state. But in this district, the decline to states tend to be uh, conservatives who are irritated at the Republican uh -huh. Party for not acting like Republicans. Yeah. You know, um, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very conservative district. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll close. I know you got a lot of people to talk to tonight, but I want to say. Um, 
that I, I'm really pleased to have some very key endorsements. The Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, uh, which yesterday addressed the Motherland Taxpayers Association for the fraud that it is, and uh, also uh, Congressman Tom McClintock, uh, the National Rifle Association, Gun Owners of California, the National Federation of Independent Business, the Pro-Life Council, um, practically every conservative organization you can think of has endorsed me, and there's a reason why. People can say whatever they want about who they are and what they're going to do. The way you judge a man or woman in politics is not by what they say, but what they do. You look at the history of how they voted. You look at what they did. That's how you judge what they will do. And I have been a faithful conservative across the board. I'm sure I made a few votes that I would do differently if I had another chance, but not many. Thank you very much for having me here.